Yeah, that good head. I'm glad you had a good uh a good thing. That's good. That's awesome, bro. Yeah, no doubt. Boys, we're getting well, after it, huh? We're on the show, man. We're live. We're ready. Oh, here we go, man. Ready to roll. Let's yeah. rock and roll. Live. Oh, you got the Yukon gear on. I love it. Yeah, I got some Yukon gear. You know, we lost, so we're out of there. So I don't even know why I'm wearing it. Can we can we win one game? Can we get past the first round? I know I know one Yukon basketball team that always wins. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. They're going to win every year. Or they're going to be like at the uh, possible chance of a championship every year. I mean, yeah, the, 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 bad, uh, the bad year for them is that they don't make the Final Four or something. Or not yeah. even that. They don't even make the Finals. That's it. It's That's a down year. You might be like one of the top five coaches of all time in any sport. Well, he, ha- he has to be. Yeah, he has to be. Him. Him. Wooden, Wooden. yeah. It's hard in football, though. Football's it's hard. Somebody, it's football's hard. Football's hard. I mean, Belichick's yeah. obviously up there. Yeah, he's up there. But let, let, so, like, I always think that people forget about like a guy like Paul Brown. Like, he has to be in the list. He won a million. Yeah. Well, not only that, though, he invented the playbook. Like, <laughs> like, like, he was the first guy to have a playbook. He was the first guy to film practices and, and get, like he did he did everything. So like he he made what it is now for all these other guys. Ah, oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Well, you know, I was watching something and they were talking about um, you know, great coaches, and they were just talking about, and I think Belichick said it. He's like, he's like Paul Brown like started all of this stuff, and then everybody just kind of took it and, and ratcheted it up. But like if you don't have the first guy like to start right. the playbook. Right. So it's, you can't leave him off any list, any one. So it's not like, you know, but yeah, he was the first guy to film practices and the first guy to have playbooks. That's interesting. Right. I mean, so it's kind of, kind of tough. And, and and apparently his, you know, how do you have the coaching trees? Yeah. Like everybody, you know, his history is everybody. It's like, yeah. Is you know like like the six degrees of separation, right? It's like somebody who was under Paul Brown birthed Belichick or whatever. You know what right, I mean? Like, right. it's, oh it's, my god, <laughs> that's it's interesting. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, Paul. Yeah. So Paul and Paul, the Browns are are his team. That was his team, right? He owned that that, the Browns. Yeah, <laughs> he was just the coach of the Browns. He owned the Browns. It's crazy, right? Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, that's it's crazy. That's crazy. Think about it. You know what else is crazy? Not to get all of on the coaches. Yeah. No, it's I'm cool sure time. you want to talk about. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I you know. like it. Yeah, I I like this conversation about coaches just because like it's the same like with players, right? Like you, you gotta you gotta keep the guys generational, right? Because like there's no doubt for this time of free agency and teams not staying together and players not gelling and kind of going from team to team, it's Belichick. Cause he's been able to figure out how to make that work without like having to like be terrible and rebuild. Right. Like he's been able to be consistently good with the system. Right. Now the, the teams that he had, I don't think from a, from a cohesion standpoint could compete with like, you know, the the 70s Steelers and the, and the eighties Niners, because those teams, like those players stayed together like forever. So like they built teams, like the chemistry was unbelievable. Like everybody, you know what I mean? So it's like a different, I mean, the athlete is different. You know, you got to take that out. Yeah. Like the, the athlete, right. You can't, you can't compare a seventies team to a, a team now just because the athletes are different now with training and size and all that stuff. Well, I think but training, you, training is the biggest yeah. factor. Is why the athlete, biggest factor. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't think as, as human beings, we've changed that much, but I think that right. as over the last 20 or th- tw- I would say 20, maybe, yeah. maybe or 30, 25, 30 years training went to a different level. Uh, supplementation, like so yeah. people, legal supplements, people, people yep. with illegal supplements, but the, no. how good the legal supplements have become. Absolutely. Absolutely. The legal supplements, the nutrition, nutrition the training regimens, the fact that the guys are getting paid so much they don't have to work in the off season. Like those guys back in the day were like, yo, I'm a I'm a used car salesman in the off season. <laughs> I'm driving a truck. Even in the 80s, even in the 80s they were. Yeah. 
Yeah, guys had to work. They had to do some stuff. They had to work. That's that's pretty. It's pretty. Yeah, I wonder what like Red Grage did uh, in the off season. I, he, yeah. well, he was the first like wasn't he the first uh, paid like really paid guy who did he was he the guy that went to the University of Illinois like in the thirties or something or I, I don't remember I just I just know that they didn't make much pro football was invented with with I think it was him that's <laughs> because he was I if it, it, I should really look this up because I don't want to say the wrong person um, if I think it I because I, I just remember thirty in my head as a thirty for thirty I think. Oh, okay, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, him. So, Red Grange, this this is just wild. So, uh, Red Grange went to University of Illinois. College football was this is like the '30s, you know. I mean, right? Yeah, uh, college football was way bigger. The pro football was like as ragtag as it gets. It was basically right, right. heavy pro, you know. Um, there, I don't know if the Steelers were invented yet, but there was the Chicago Bears. Okay. And right. Chicago Bears was George Hallis. And uh, George Hallis had the idea that if he could pay Red Grange really good money, because he was the most popular college football player, mm -hmm. and pay him some real money, that that he would play football only and wouldn't wouldn't have a job on the farm or something. <laughs> That's funny. You know, and, and and that's what he basically did. So he Red Grange basically there was I don't I couldn't even tell you the names of these teams. It was like weird names for teams back then. Like it was Red like stockings. Yeah, it would be like you really yeah, the Waylock uh golden golden retrievers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Uh, but he would go from train on uh, train to train. And he would play. He played like an incredible amount of football games because yeah, yeah. basically all the games were in the pros were Red Grange going on a train with his team playing some other team, and that would be the other team's only game. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. They would all That's what money. it was. They would make money from that game. So these other teams might play a couple of games, but nobody history doesn't really have too much on them. They have the games when Red Grange came into town. And play, wow. so so that's crazy. Yeah, that was kind of the be kind of the beginning, and he was dominant, and you know everybody looked like they were running in slow motion back then. And obviously, he probably ran a ten nine hundred meter dash, and everyone thought he was really fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. That is great. Yeah. So yeah, that, 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 so I think uh, I said if I was alive in the thirties, maybe I would have might have been a legend. Um, you never know. Yeah, if you could just if you could just. I would have lifted Just, though, so I probably yeah. wouldn't have been. No, they, you, you have to get it uh, in the time machine and go back, like like with your body. Yes, with your body, right? Just dominate. Just, Just dominate. like little kids. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy, but um, uh, yeah, right. no, but um, I, I think Tyree the coaches Hill back then. Could you imagine Tyreek Hill going back in the uh, way back machine? No. And Tyreek Hill, I'd like to play, plop uh, Tyreek Hill in like. The Wayland Golden Retrievers team is at Red Grange comes into town and they're like, Who is this guy? Is he allowed to play in this game? <laughs> it's just run around scoring touchdowns like every play. Every play. Every play. Just throw a little swing pass. Just give it uh, it's it's like, what is that? A pass? <laughs> <laughs> that is great. That is great. Oh, oh, so funny. But yeah, man, it's 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 interesting. Um, but yeah, when you talk about coaches, like I always talk about, um, I always talk about Shula. I mean, the guy. I don't think the guy had a single like losing season for like thirty some years. If I'm not mistaken, he never had a lose. I think he had a like. I think he had winning seasons every year, like nine at least nine wins or whatever it was. If it was fourteen games, he had eight wins, like every year. And uh, Shula you know, was great. He is Shula was power. great. I think Landry was phenomenal as well. Like Landry was great. Landry, I think Landry, if I'm not mistaken, now now maybe you know this. I want to say Tom Landry invented the four three defense. I don't know that, but I thought he also might have invented the shotgun too. May have. I, I I just I just I, I wait. So which is which is the defense that the Steelers run? 
with all the linebackers. That's three, four, right? I, well, the, I, I'm not sure. I, I really don't remember because that, because I think I think four I think, was a big defense in the '80s. I don't I know think the four three seven. is the one where so like so like the three four is when you need like linebackers for days, right? Because you gotta you gotta have like guys that athletic linebackers, right, to play the three four. You gotta have like a lot because it, well, they to the four three. They have to cover more ground. The three four right. linebackers are like the inside guys, basically on the inside. The outside guys are your pass rushers and right. So the four three is a little little less. You you can do you. It's a, it's a little more um, uh, D line less less of the. It's less more D line orientated. Right. So I think that's the one that Landry invented. like actually invented. Oh right, because he had the <laughs> Doomsday defense. Mm-hmm. Dallas's Doomsday with with uh, who who was it again? It was. Oh, yeah. Ed Two Tall Jones. Ed Two Tall Jones. Randy White. Uh, Randy White. Yep. Those two guys were animals. Animals. They had two I forgot who the other guys were, though. I can't believe I forgot this because I, I, I used to. That's your squad, dude. I, oh, that was my squad. Yeah, I used to be so. And I used to like, get their, their football cards, and I would be like, oh, man, how come Randy White only had like, oh, we only has like four sacks every year, you know? And, <laughs> We call it have like eight, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Randy was a beast, though. Brand, yeah, well, yeah, he was good because he, because he was more. I think he might have been the strong side, and because mm-hmm. that and the four three. If, if that is the case, I'm gonna look this up real quick. If that's look it up. Guy, I'm almost, the strong almost side, and the weak side is is a the strong side guy is really a, a run stopper, especially in the '90s and '80s. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. You know what was sad about Tom Landry? I always thought, and and obviously Jimmy yeah. Johnson, one of my favorite coaches too. But I always still felt the sadness for for um, for Landry. He was known as the most creative guy back in his time. One of the most creative guys in his time, if not the most creative. And in the end, it was the fact that he lacked the ability to kind of move with some of the new stuff. Yeah. That did him in. I always thought that was. Uh, I always thought that was sad because I, he was always thought of as like he he must like as he was ending his career and they were. I mean, he's a coach, so he understands how it works. But but he had to go home at some nights and say to himself, "Geez, I was once considered in the innovator." <laughs> I know. Um, well, I mean, I think at the end of the day, every coach just wanes out. You just get, you just get, you just go, you just get older and you wane out. Like, I think it happens to every coach. I mean, Tom Landry, what did he coach for 30 years? Other than Nick Saban. Yeah, Nick Saban. I don't know. I don't know what he does. <laughs> but it, well, apparently, I, apparently, according to Rush, uh, Rush Pro, the uh, high, famous high school coach is very controversial guy. He had two families at one time, married both of them. Oh, my God. The county over in Alabama. <laughs> A high school coach? Yeah, he was. Remember, Ari, do you remember Two A Days, the show Two A Days on MTV? Yes. With Hoover High School? Yes. Powerhouse. He was the head coach of Hoover. Pete and Repeat. That was one of my favorite. Remember that yeah. guy? Yes. <laughs> one of my favorite things of all time. <laughs> he was my, he was my son, Repeat. I thought that was so clever. That, that, that was. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a. Groundbreaking show because MTV I love that show. Having sports now, you see all these, right? Yeah, it's amazing because MTV now is so stagnant and like they don't do I anything know. good. But they had so many. Well, I don't want to get too far off this tangent because I do want to actually talk. They did it at one time so many innovative shows. I know they invented basically half the stuff you see now. I know, I and know, now, it's I amazing. Tom Landry of television. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. That's it. It's over. I mean, what wasn't he the coach for twenty nine years? I think uh, he was a cowboy coach for twenty nine uh, years. He was the head coach forever. I mean, top. Listen, remember how they used to stand up before they would get set? Yes, that was my favorite. Yes. Thing. That, that was my favorite thing with all, I, with all my <laughs> friends. I would always tell the linemen, like when I was playing, like running my court. I'm like, you guys got to pop up before you go down. Of course, they were all <laughs> Giants fans, so they didn't know what the hell yeah. I was talking about. And I would be like, no, man, you got to pop up, then go down. 
That is so great. 2019. Cowboys. Right. 2019. And um, I wonder, I did wonder who invented the shotgun because you know what I think I got that from? Oh, from uh, the movie. Remember the Titans. Right. And he was, the, and at the time of the Remember Titans, he was the opposite coordinator, I believe, of the Giants, I thought. Oh. Um, so, because that was the 60s, right? Or no, was that early 70s? Maybe it was after him. It's, uh, okay, here we go. That's, there's a whole thing on this. Uh, I, I don't want to read about all the single wing and all this stuff. I just want to <laughs> Who invented the shotgun? Just yeah, tell me. Get just an answer, Google, for good and sick. I mean, you give us everything out. You suppress half the world. Can you just tell me what? I mean, a shotgun isn't controversial. They're going to get canceled. They're oh, going to cancel what? the shotgun. I, uh, I've already been canceled probably 50 times in my career. <laughs> That's great. Just take it 51. Um, let me see. The shotgun. They give me re- the history. The history of. Shotgun evolved from a single wing in the 30s, 40s. Uh, all fame coach implemented the shotgun with Tommy. Okay, so this is – it was actually implemented in the 40s. But why Wait. Why do I th- – oh, I here's why. The, the Jets briefly experimented with, with, it, with it with Joe Namath because of his bad knee. Um, and then the formation was not used on a regular basis in the NFL until 1975, and then only by the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. With Roger Staubach. So it's no NFL teaches the, uh, the formation during this time. Some believed it was invented by Tom Landry. He Landry simply dusted off old innovation and off the old innovation to address a pressing problem. Stallback had an un- inexperienced offensive line. He wanted to give them uh, – um, and then they basically rolled with it. He realized wow. that he, he was so smart. So smart. Great, great, so great, smart. great man, great man of faith too. Yes, Him great and, man and, of faith. And, and Stallback. As much as – is is about that. Yeah, as much as I hated, as much as I hated the Cowboys, now I appreciate him and Staubach more because they were just great guys, godly men. Yes. And you want you want to talk you want to talk about Starbuck, dude? Starbuck, dude, he was really smart too. Like, do you know he's worth like six hundred million dollars oh, yeah. or seven? It's like, and to to have been able to build that, I read his. Book. Yeah, I mean, for him to be able to build that business like back then, like when he like. To build it to what it is, like that's phenomenal, and he did it. You know what? You, listen, he did a lot of goodwill, man. Um, if you watched his uh, his uh, football life, did you watch the Starbuck football life? The Starbuck, you know, I don't think I've seen it. No, uh, you know, uh, I probably have. I just I, that's I just, your that's your guy, bro. Like I, I, I have, it's I it's listen. It. I've I've watched a me- million of those. And that one might be my favorite. It's one of my favorite ones. And I don't like the Cowboys, but I love Roger Staubach for, for the man that he was. You know what I mean? Like, you appreciate that stuff when you get older, you know, like the kind of man that he was. Just a great He's a man. Great, great guy. Definitely. And, and faith is so important to him. Oh. And his book, his book, uh, it's an older book. And I don't know mm-hmm. how. Oh, that's right. That's when I was doing my uh, Amazon. This is uh, like four years ago. I was selling books on Amazon. And I was actually mm-hmm. making a coin doing it. And I would come across these books and I would, I would read the ones I like before I put them up there. I'll have to tell you that gotcha. strategy, by the way. It's a very successful strategy. People. <laughs> Um, but uh, but I went away from it because Amazon started stacking me with fees, which supposedly they got away from now. Um, I was way too far ahead of the curve. I was selling books, making like an extra thousand a week. Nice. I saw, I saw a video of a guy that was saying, "I was like, wow. I can do this." So I would go to uh, I would go to thrift uh, like uh, these book sales at uh, like the, like churches or, or libraries, right. and they would you know they get overflow with books, and they want. Uh, people and you go in there and you literally pay five dollars a bag as many books as you can put in the bag i'd come out of there with like 200 bucks for 20 bucks wow yep so you, yeah. did you did you have like a, a like a method to what book you were correct books you were uh at first 
my method was I was trying to figure out high value books. And then I, I saw a video and the guy said, who cares? You don't you, like get every book that you can within certain categories, within yeah, yeah, certain yeah. categories that you think you like and that you'd position. So I was like, uh, history sports was for me. I did history sports. Um, I think I did a lot of biographies, like things that kind of, I was, and his thought process was, here's some of those that you're going to like. And if for some reason you don't sell them, you put them in your own library shelf, you know, you keep them, you know, you, uh, that was kind of the thought process. So, and then you just ship them off. So here, here's a business tip for people. You could do this with any product at Amazon. There's some categories that are, are um, they have to approve you for. So, but books, um, oh gosh, there's a few categories. It, it's been a while since I did. But books, you would take the books, you would um, put them in a box and you get you get the label right off of Amazon, ship, ship it right to Amazon. They store it for you. They send it out for you. It's unbelievable. You just do the listing. You put the listing in, you send them out, and then, you know, the uh, – and, and the listing's pretty easy because when, as you start to type in the book, chances are Amazon has it 98% of the time. I think there was some – a couple of obscure books like Pittsburgh's Best Business Owners. That, that book was in there. Before my choice, like, this was not – I didn't remember doing this thing. Still sits on my shelf, Pittsburgh's Best Business <laughs> <laughs> you should have looked at the label on that one first before oh, you. Okay, I should have looked at. It. I was just like this. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I should have just been like Pittsburgh best business owners. What are we gonna do with that? You know, That's maybe crazy. one day it would be worth a thousand dollars if any of those guys are famous. I, I didn't yeah. know any name. I didn't, it wasn't Carnegie. I can tell you that. That's um, funny. So uh, yeah, so you do that, and I'm sure it's evolved a little bit since the four or five years ago when I did it, but. You would you and and then people just go to Amazon, they order, and it goes out automatically. Wow! Do anything. So you, the, your hardest part is going to find them and really, what I learned is you should probably um, stick more with the bigger names books. You know, some of the bigger name books don't go for much because there's so many of them, and right. then try to find. Um, you uh, just take some t upfront research and look at. Um, uh, the like popular things and the better prices, spreads and stuff. There's apps that do it for you now. There's actually apps. So you unbelievable. Yeah, there's apps that do it. Uh, I was just highly impatient and I just wanted to, to get as many books as I can in my category, get them out and go. But like all of a sudden, you look up and you're like, uh, two hundred dollars that day, three hundred dollars that day. You're like, whoa. And the better you do, <laughs> the better the books are. Like the more you need, like your ratings go up, and then. You can then yeah. start, and here's how Amazon gets you. Then you start to do well. You say, "Hey, I'll just use Amazon has their own advertising. Advertise for like fifty bucks a day on Amazon, okay? Um, your store. If you see, like, if you go on Amazon ever to buy anything, I'm sure you have. Mm -hmm. You go in there and let, let's say you're going to buy socks. There's usually some featured company up at the top. They're paying to be there. Wow. Companies that are paying, like, in some categories, it doesn't cost much at all. Like, I'm sure socks, uh, maybe not socks, but, like, you know, if you were trying to sell in, like, tight fit shirts, probably cost an arm and a leg, you know, to do right, that. Right, right. But if you were selling, um, I don't know, uh, 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 nonfiction books on religion, you may not because right, right, right. In a very popular category um, it's not a heavily advertised category, uh, and in kind of that mar manipulating that marketplace from it is incredibly effective. So you could actually do a lot. And what ends up happening is then you build these cool relationships. Like so, people like your books. They they inbox you, blah blah blah, and then you give them a send them a discount. So like, let's say you were doing Christian books, right? We we're doing Christian, right, books. right, right. Me, you have developed a Christian book business. Boom, 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 there you boom, go. boom. All right, and 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 by the way, Christian books are the almost the easiest to get because I would grab every time I get Christian books because I didn't really um, even even though I'm boring and Christian, I didn't really understand the Christian book category. Right. Um, so 
I would get books I would want to read, so I'd keep them. But I never put them out there because I just – there was – honestly, there's so many Christian books. You'd be, you, If you went to one of these things, you'd be shocked. You would be great to go with because yeah. you would be able to be like, hey, this is like – this you would thumb through it a little bit like this. Right, right. Yeah, this is this is you know not what you want, right? <laughs> yeah. And so you know, like I mean, when I first started doing it, I'd be like, "Oh, TD Jakes, great." <laughs> oh, Joel Austin, you're perfect. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but hey, they can sell well know. though. What's they, that? They sell. They sell well though. Probably. Oh no, they sell. Yeah, no, right? I, they sell well. They well, sell well. Those would be so if you. Uh, yeah. You would lead with that, actually. So mm -hmm. here's an interesting thing, and this is this is I know this is going way off, but if I was yeah, we're way off with it. business advice, this is really because I just went through it and I did well with it. I just didn't understand the Amazon fee part when it changed from my introductory fee, and they started zapping me, and then they went away from that a year ago. I heard from zapping people because people were jumping off like me. I was like, whoa! I was like, this is crazy. Um, so I went from making incredible profits to making like very little. And I was like, what's the point? Yeah. But um, so what was interesting, uh, uh, what was I about to say? What was I just about to say about Christian books? It was oh, so you, said, oh, you, oh, leave, you, you leave, leave with, those with Joel Osteen or TD Jakes if you were like to advertise, right? Mm -hmm. and then you have your cat or your books, right? So what's really cool about it, um, some of the books that uh, might be better for people who really want to gain the knowledge of Christianity and and, right, right. and, and uh, other books might be better. And by the way, also might be more profitable too, because then a Joel Austin or TJ, but those will sell, you sell a lot of those, right? You might make yeah. a, buck, a buck or two on them, which is not good. But then you might have some other ones that are really great books that people go to that you make four or five books on. Mm -hmm. and, and it's and it like goes really quick. So once all of a sudden I I went from having like I had when I first started, I was just sending like, like a handful of books at a time. And I was like, what if I just kept sending them like a uh, hundred buck books a week? And I was just start sending a hundred books a week. And I was hitting all these these uh, places. It was great. And I, I would come back and Nicole would be like, how was how was the, the book sale? I said, oh, it's always like um, older ladies, you know, who like retired uh, or older men. And, and, right. and, and I would be chatting it up with these guys because I was not getting so many books, right? And Troy used to come with me when he was like, like a baby, like one. Yeah. <laughs> so I would be chatting up with these people. And it was so much fun. I'm not. T I'm telling you. That's you'd awesome. You'd be sitting with talking with older people. They would see the books you you grab, and they'd be like, "Hey, you know, here's another book. Like, uh, uh, a book in this category you might like is this." And I'm like, "I see that you might you might do the Amazon book selling thing. They're like these books. Uh, we have a few more of these. These sell." And they would tell you these, and they were older people, like just giving back. Yeah, you know and it was all donations. So it would be like a church. Like there was one that wow. uh, middle town over here, the church, it would mm -hmm. be money to go to church. So I would do like, you know, you paid five bucks. I would give them another 40 or 50 bucks. Just, Hey, you know, like, Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would come out every 200 bucks, you know, I'd give them yeah. like, you know, 40 or 20 or 10, whatever. And cause it was, goes to their church or go mm -hmm. to, um, like a library, like really mm -hmm. good causes. Right, right, right. It couldn't fit them anymore in their in their um, in their own library. You know, they're getting new books and stuff like that. And so it was really cool. It was like it was like a business. You felt like, oh, I'm kind of giving back to. I'm making money, but I'm giving back, like because I'm donating on the front end and then making money. So anyway, long and short of it is, Amazon can be like people who who are trying to make some side money. Yeah, you could really make some good money and it's not hard if you understand how to do it and there's endless videos on it that's the end of that well, back to tom landry and i know you got to run yeah you know, i do have to run but let's talk tom landry real quick yeah because i think tom landry uh you know first of all it, it was you know that you know think about how much more he would have won if not for the 70 steelers right like we're stacked and that's another guy no, like if you look at you look at Noel, you're and, and I would, I would, I, I yes. So I'm a little biased, but but if you put if you put, I I would put, you know, I probably would put Landry ahead of Noel, right? But Noel, when you look at how he was able to draft, 
and like like just him his, his his the guys he had under him that were scouting, right? They just did incredibly well on the draft. I mean, like the yeah. one draft with Lambert and Swan and Stallworth all in the same draft. They had some other like like that's all you need to say. John Stallworth, Lynn Swan, Jack Lambert in one draft, and not mention not to mention. I mean, these are legends, not just Hall of Famers. Like they're legends. Like and 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 you know, I mean. He just was able to turn. I mean, and the Steelers were absolute trash before the, before he got there. They were right. like the worst team in the league. And then he just, you know, he got Joe Green, and he figured out he figured out how. One thing that Noel figured out what to do, he figured out how to get the right players to make it work. Like he said, "Listen, I can't play football, <laughs> so I'm gonna make sure I get the right." players and that's the one thing he did well and he only coached i guess i think he maybe 23 years but it was I mean, and towards the end like he was i know he got written out like just, Tom Landry too. yeah because he just he just couldn't you know he couldn't you know he was a real rough scruff guy too like right. nobody like he wasn't nice like him and Bradshaw, like Bradshaw like still has pain like nightmares he still has pain over the his relationship with noel he talks about it Cause like Noel was just like a, like just not nice to him. But like the thing about Noel is like I think he was really like intellectual type of guy. Like and he, he was. was just like he was just like you know football was just another like form of intellect for him. You know what I mean? So like he he wasn't a warm and fuzzy guy. So I think a lot of you know I I think as the generations go on, you get need to be a little more warm and fuzzy, and that's why he didn't last. He's like he's like I can't be warm and fuzzy because <laughs> I got a coach. It's, you know, it's funny because we grew up in a different era. It's so interesting yep. and in, in, in how uh, uh, kids evolve and stuff like that. And I think it's uh, – and Chuck Noll, by the way, was – what position do you think he played? He was a pro football player, by the way, just so you know. Chuck Noll played pro football player. I did not know that. Uh, DB. He played for, first of all, and, and this goes to what you said earlier – no, he was not DB. He was a guard and linebacker. I oh, guess. guard. Well, a guard and linebacker. Remember back then they were uh, two platooning, I guess, or whatever. Um, uh, no wonder he's smart, though. Yeah. Lyman had to be smart. So he – yes. Yeah, I agree. So many offensive linemen are so smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, linebackers would be uh, really smart, except they we get hit in the head too much. Um <laughs> <laughs> it it was. I always used to say like I, there was a time when I was a genius. It just you know <laughs> it ended somewhere around twenty four when I had just been hit that many times. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, Cleveland Browns. He was he played for for seven years. Wow. So he played for Paul Brown. There you go. And uh, he obviously blocked for Jim Brown. Jim Brown wow. had to be his running back. What, what, what years did he play? 53 to 59. And how about this? I'm going to read this. It's just so interesting. This goes to exactly what you're saying. You're dead on. So he wasn't he wasn't selected until the 20th round. People don't realize the draft used to have 9,000 rounds. Which, like, by the way, I wish they just still had. You know why? Yeah. Because so many guys would get – like in the old days, remember you'd see like – Someone said was drafted in the nineteenth round. And like, remember yep, yep. to get and be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, how bad is too long? Nineteenth round, like nineteenth round. Thousandth best player in the in the country. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's <laughs> crazy. There were, guys, there were guys that made it, and, and kind of free agency is taking that place now. But I still think it would have been cool to have like, like, of I, I, I don't like that about baseball. They're just like yeah. they draft seventy rounds, and and yeah. every guy's gonna feel like they're the greatest because they got. At drafted. least he got drafted, right? Yeah, you can all say they got drafted. They draft like ten thousand. That's so crazy. But I remember crazy. even when we were in school, they still had twelve rounds. They still had twelve. I wish they still had twelve rounds. Yeah, I would have had a shot to go in the fifteenth. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That is great. Uh, uh, Oh God! Yeah, that's that's. You great. know what I think? I think I think it was twelve. I want to say right. no, but I want I right want to went to college. It was right before I went to college, I, dropped out. I want to I want to say it was twelve, 
up until like the middle of the when you came to UConn, like the first couple. Because oh, yes. I I, I want to say Matt DeGennaro, like those like him and like maybe Courtney uh, Courtney Burton, like those. I just, remember, I just think of those two because I know they were like Courtney Burton you know, might have got drafted. I think he might have gotten drafted like late, like like eleventh or twelfth round. You should look that up because and then I think the next year they went to seven. Yes, because the, the uh, uh, it's, it's Cornelius Benton, right? Cornelius Benton, yep. Um, I remember the the legend because he was behind Matt DiGennaro. He was that, and, yep. and everybody thought he was really good too. And he had a cannon, right? He had a he started cannon. one year, right? Is that what it was? He only start, yep. He only started one year, but I mean, listen, Matt had a lot of e- equity. Matt had done very well, right, but Matt you know, it's always it was always a controversy, though, right? Everybody oh, well, wants the backup. Was, yeah, I didn't know, that's yeah, yeah, people always wanted the backup, right? Right, is that what was going on? <laughs> you know how people always want the backup, right? But um, but Matt, you know, Matt was great, like you know. Oh, so, yeah. but but listen, I was a redshirt, so like I didn't know. I'm like, listen, man, I'm just trying to freaking play. Like I, I want, yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out what I can do on scout team so I can travel. I, I just remember <laughs> you right, you're right, you're right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't know that was like a big deal. And you're right. Like, oh, man, was- he was drafted 12th round. 12th round. Three knew it. to the Steelers. I knew it. That's, why, that's probably why I remember, too, because it was the Steelers. But I, I just remember they said he had a cannon. Oh, no. He could he could, he could, could sling it. No, no, I tell you what he didn't like to do, though. He never liked to check it down to the running backs. I'm like, dude, I'm open every play. <laughs> just, throw, just throw it, dude. I can run with it. And then, and then he finally did it against Nova, and I scored. I was like, I was like, Courtney, see? He's got to throw, throw to the backs. But those guys, they like to throw it downfield. They had Dids and and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, Breezy. They're like, yo, we, we, we got to get it downfield. Matthew Jones um, has, has a little Wikipedia page. Yeah. They played one year with the Coyote, Connecticut Coyotes, I guess, which was Arena. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess maybe he didn't get drafted. I guess I don't think Matt got drafted. I he got a chance. I think I remember reading something that he was. Uh, I mean, he was like every record. It nah, Shane, he was a good player, Shane, man. right? Shane might have broke some. Yeah. I have to look that all up. I can't yeah. forget. And then I'll I got a bo- I gotta boogie record. though, dude. I think what's the name from um, everybody's record? Um, who's that? The guy oh, who's um, doing Orlovsky. The guy who ran out of the back of the end zone, that guy. He's <laughs> Do you remember he did? You know that, right? I've seen him. Yeah, he's good. He's doing well for himself. Good for him. Do you remember? Do you remember out of the back of the end zone? Like two. Was, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like the I, one I guy. Laughing. I'm like, come on, it's UConn. Come on, like really, dude? You yeah, gotta represent. That's, that's the first thing they say. To oh like, my god! Quarterback from UConn. I'm like, what does that oh. have anything to do with it? I know, I know, dude. Can you not run out of the back of the end zone, Dan? Come on, bro. You know they're gonna but, say uh, it's because he's from UConn. You know they're. I know, gonna I know. They love this. Yeah. Has such a unique name. I yeah. Think, that they love to bring it up and like rip it. Um, Chuck Knoll, lineman. Tom Landry, running back. And also, nice. also a pro player. And that's why I like Landry. Anyway, let me go, bro. I, I, I got a boogie, man. Thank you, Dave. Oh, and the um, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the show. Do it. It was fun, guys. Talking. Thanks, thanks for having me. Talk to you soon, brother. Have a great day, brother. Later. All right. All right. So, uh, <laughs> great stuff. I've been covering Tom Landry and Chuck Knoll. I mean, we're going back to like, old school guys here. Um, but I, I think this is so cool, like how y- you you see two legendary coaches and then you were diving into like where these guys not just come from, but like how they made it and how, how there's kind of a ton of similarities just evolved in today's game um, of, of how it's happened. But I mean – he was a pro football player. If you look at many of the NFL coaches today, a lot of them were were pro players, a lot of the successful ones, but a lot aren't. But back then, a lot of these guys basically probably to get to get some sort of uh, job, they, they were able to go right from being a pro football player like Tom Landry and just start out as a coach. Um, and and uh, obviously legendary coach he was, just like the Big Tuna. Uh, for the Giants going and, and uh, Bill Parcells going and being a a pro coach, um, I'm pretty sure 
uh, you know, these guys being able to get in right away and, and having that opportunity. So cool. Such a cool, cool uh, story. Really good topic today. Um, that, that short, a little shorter podcast today, but it was a good one um, for uh, Big Mondays, Football in the Kitchen Sink. If any of you guys want to like, subscribe, the show, please do it. It helps with our algorithm. We'd love to have you uh, uh, get more and more of this content sent your way because it's really cool. We, we do the show every Monday. Um, we try to start at 8.30 a.m. Depends on uh, when we uh, get rolling. But, uh, you know, like and subscribe really helps. You can just click it right below and, and uh, uh, see the show until next Monday uh, for Big Mondays. And obviously right now we're in the NCAA tournament. Enjoy the NCAA tournament. Enjoy the basketball. Um, you got FCS football going on. It's a pretty unique time period with all that going on. Uh, until next time on, on Big Mondays uh, for football and the kitchen sink. We'll run a contest soon. So if you watch the show and we send out a bunch of T-shirts the first time, we're going to send out some more coming up. Um, so if you DM at Coach Schumann on Twitter and you're interested in a T-shirt, football in the kitchen sink, send me your information. I do have to say, sometimes guys get upset that I didn't see their DM and because I get a lot of DMs um, and they didn't get a shirt. Just keep writing me, okay? Just because you sent me one message, and this is, always goes for like with college coaches as well. Like, don't DM a college coach once and think that, oh, he should see your stuff. Same thing, with, I get so many DMs, a lot of DMs, which is cool. I love the interaction. But sometimes I miss people's DMs. So DM me again. If you got to DM me three times with your address, do it. And I'll get it out to you, okay? Because uh, I don't see every single message. Sometimes I miss them. All right? Don't get upset. Don't get mad. Just send me another DM and, and re request it, and I'll take care of it for you. Okay? That's the smart way to do it. And when you're dealing with college coaches, don't just DM once and hope and pray. Make sure you DM them once a month if they didn't respond to you. Send your video to them. Do it again. Send your video to them with your information, with your contact. Do it again. Send them links. Show them that, you, that you're that you that interested. Reach out in multiple ways. That's how you get people's attention. Okay? you got to make sure that you reach out. So if you're interested in a shirt, send it to me. Hopefully I see it the first time. If I don't, send it to me again. I'll get you a shirt. And it's free. Isn't that great? It's free. Have a great day. Like and subscribe. Football in the kitchen sink. See you next Monday.